Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, EVGA's NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti dedicated gaming graphics card. What is this? Why should you watch and why should you care? Two groups of people should watch this video. Group 1 are esports gamers. Do you want to play games such as League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Overwatch, Dota 2, Rocket League? Those games will play perfectly at 1080p at high detail at high refresh rates, high frames per second on a card such as this. The second group of people who should watch this video is anybody who has a pre-built computer such as this Dell here or an HP, Lenovo, uh, Zeus, Acer, or other similar style machine that did not originally come with a dedicated gaming graphics card, doesn't have the power supply for it, and really can't take anything more. If you are looking for the easiest to install graphics card with the best performance available, you found it. This is the card you should definitely be taking a look at. Now, let me briefly talk about games for a minute, and then I'll talk about the pre-built a bit some more, and then I'll give a summary of the overall market. First of all, games. All those games I mentioned will play at uh, high detail or better, generally ultra detail, at 1080p, sometimes better, on this card at over 60 frames per second. There will be game performance reviews on my channel coming up in the next week or so. If you've not subscribed to my channel, click on the subscribe button that's down below the video. It doesn't cost anything and it will give you notifications when future performance videos on this and other similar graphics cards come out. What about other games? There's Battlefield 1, which just came out. You have uh, Mafia 3, you've got uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, which is a little bit older, Fallout 4, Doom, Rise of the Tomb Raider. How well do those type of games play on a card such as this? They will play, and I will do some performance videos on those games, but it's not really meant for them. It will not play all those titles I just mentioned at ultra detail at 60 plus frames per second at 1080p. It just won't. It will play most of them at 60 frames per second at medium detail, some high, some medium. Some you might have to lower the resolution down to 900p or even 720p. I will test those and show you some performance of those games in an upcoming video on this card. If you really want to play those type of games, the card up from this is the recommended one, the GTX 1060. It has more performance and it's more designed for those type of games. But you don't have to spend the money to buy a 1060 or more for Rocket League, Overwatch, etc. Those games play just fine on a card such as this. So that's eSports titles. That's a, it's a great card for those games. What about pre-built computers? Well, briefly, most computers such as this that come in a case about that size that you just buy and plug into, not one you built, but one that you bought from a major company, most of these computers have anywhere between a 200 and 300 watt power supply. Most of them, well, there's exceptions, but most of them do not have what's called a six pin PCI Express power cable. What is that? It's one of these. This, six pins, this is designed to power higher level video cards. The card above a 1050 is the 1060. All 1060s require that your power supply have one of these six pin cables to plug into the video card directly because the motherboard does not provide enough power to run those higher end graphics cards. If you have a computer such as this or an Acer Aspire or a Lenovo H50 or any of the other basic pre-built computers, most of those machines don't have one of these and most of the power supplies aren't powerful enough to run something such as a GTX 1060 or an AMD RX 470 or 480. Very good cards as well, but they require dedicated power cables. Now there are solutions. This is an adapter cable that will convert two Molex four pin connectors to one six pin power cable. They also make serial ATA power connectors to six pin connectors. If you know that you've got a higher end power supply, 300 watts or more, and you know it's a modern power supply that provides enough wattage to handle a higher level card, you can use adapters such as these to run those higher level cards. Be cautious because many computers will physically accept these adapters, but the power supplies don't actually provide the wattage needed. This particular computer is 265 watts. I would never use an adapter cable on that power supply. You can replace that power supply. However, that's a little involved. First of all, if your computer is relatively recent, replacing your power supply will void your warranty. 
Second of all, many pre-built computers come with proprietary power supplies. The connectors, the jacks inside are not industry standard. Now some do, but some don't. Do you know how to tell the difference? Well, if you do, maybe you'd be a good candidate to replace the power supply with something such as an EVGA 400 watt power supply. They run about $30 or so, and they have all the connectors needed to run video cards and hard drives and DVD drives. It has a standard 24 pin power connector for your motherboard. Does your computer have one? Compaq, HP, and Lenovo machines are well known, for example, for not using standard power supplies. I don't want to get too much into the weeds on power supplies because we're talking about a graphics card that doesn't need it, but that's exactly why this card exists. If you own a machine like that, or something from one of the other manufacturers, and you don't want to get into figuring out, can I or can I not use adapter cables? Do I have to replace my power supply? Will it even work? Will it fit? If you want to avoid that entire process and you simply go, look, I just want to open my computer, take the graphics card, insert it into the slot, put the cover back on, plug the monitor in, turn it on, and I just want it to work. This is the fastest graphics card that will do that with no fuss, no power cables, no power supply issues, nothing. In virtually every, and I don't want to say every because I'm sure there's an exception somewhere, but in almost every situation with a pre-built machine, this card will work two to five minutes to install, it couldn't be any easier. Insert it in the slot. There's, no, there's nothing to connect inside the machine. You just basically insert it in the slot, put the screw in place to hold it in place if it needs one, close it up, you're done. Install the video drivers from NVIDIA's website, you're done. It's very easy. Now, performance-wise, let me talk about performance for a minute. You're paying for that. That ease and convenience, this is priced appropriately for it. This is $150. In terms of value for the money, for ease of installation, you can't beat how easy this is. Insert it in the computer, turn the computer on, you're done. It really is that easy. But what about performance for the dollar? It's not nearly as good a deal from that point of view. It really isn't. I'll give you a very simple example of why. The card directly up from this is the GeForce GTX 1060 three gigabyte card. It is $200. This is $150. So for $50 more, which isn't that much more money, well, maybe it is to you, but for $50 more, how much more performance do you get? 75%. It is a huge performance difference, and you are not paying 75% more. You're not even paying 50% more. The 1060 three gigabyte card is a better value per dollar spent than this card. But it requires a six pin PCI Express power connector. Now please note, if your computer, be it a pre-built or um, a custom built, if your computer has a six pin PCI Express power connector coming off the power supply, buy the 1060. Or if you prefer the AMD RX 470. Let me talk about that for a minute. The RX 470 is less expensive than the 1060, but it's a little bit slower. $170, currently available after mail-in rebate on the day I'm shooting this video on Newegg. $170 for a four gigabyte RX 470. That's only $20 more than this card. But those cards require an eight pin PCI Express power cable. They draw more power. Even these six pins won't work. You need an eight pin for that card. However, it is 50% faster than this. Value for ease of installation, you cannot beat this card. Value in terms of performance per dollar, it's not that great. What about going down? What about the 1050 non-TI card? It's about 15% slower than this for $30 less, but it has two gigs of VRAM instead of four. I am not jumping up and down about the 1050, but I haven't tested it yet. I have one on order and I will do a video on it and I will do some benchmarks and I will compare the 1050 and the 1050 Ti in game videos coming up in the future. What about AMD's lower end card, the RX 460? I like that card. I've previously reviewed that card. There'll be a link in the description below to that. You can now buy a two gigabyte RX 460 for $90 on Newegg after mail-in rebate. Link to that in the description below. 
If I was buying a card just to play Dota 2, Rocket League, or uh, League of Legends, I would actually buy the RX 460 2 gigabyte card for $90. That is $60 less than this card. Now, it is 20% slower and it does have half the VRAM. Those games aren't going to use more than 2 gigs of VRAM. The, the VRAM will not be a limitation for esports titles. Many of those esports titles will run on integrated graphics. They will absolutely run on a 2 gig RX 460. For $90, that's a deal. However, if you want the ability to play Battlefield 1, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Doom, Hitman, and maybe you're okay to play them at 900p or 1080p resolution and maybe medium detail, then the 4 gig 1050 Ti is worth buying because it is faster than the 460 and the extra 2 gigabytes of VRAM will matter to a point on those, on those games. The 1050 has 2 gigs, but the problem with the 1050 is it's missing 17% of the execution resources. I'll talk about more of those differences in a future video, but I personally think at the moment this opinion is subject to change upon more experience. Either buy a 2 gig 460, RX 460, or buy the 4 gig 1050 Ti. Depending upon whether you are exclusively an esports title player and you couldn't care less about playing Battlefield 1, or if you also want the ability to play Battlefield 1, then I would buy this card over the RX 460. The extra performance will make a difference in a game like that. The extra 20%, 20 to 25% performance will make a difference. So I hope that overview of this card and what it's good for esports gamers, pre-built machines is helpful to you. I hope I've answered most of your questions. If I haven't, that's what the comment section is for. However, if your specific question is, will this play game X or game Y, keep in mind that I will have upcoming game performance videos on my channel. I'll be comparing this. Some of those games, I'll do a extensive comparison, RX 462 gig, RX 464 gig, 1052 gig, and 1050 Ti 4 gig in one video on each of those games to show you the overall relative performance difference and how well they play. Having said all of that, by all means, ask your questions below. And if you want to check out this card or any of the other things I've mentioned in the video, that's what the video description is for. How about we do an unboxing and see what's in here? I have a feeling it's a video card. I know, but some people like unboxings. I do unboxings because, well, if you want to see an unboxing, here you go. And if you just came here for an unboxing and you watched through all of that, awesome. And if you don't care about all that, well, I don't know if you waited this long. Let me throw that in my trash pile. And we have a box. What's in the box? You know what's interesting about these cards is that um, as you go down market, the higher end boxes tend to be fancier with fancier packaging. These are pretty simple. You have a bubble envelope. Inside you have an anti-static bag. Save your packaging. First of all, I recommend EVGA cards over most others. Why? EVGA has excellent customer service. They have US-based customer service, excellent warranty support. They're very good about taking care of you if you have a problem with one of their cards. Furthermore, in the future, maybe you want to move the card, maybe you want to sell the card. Having the box, having the bubble wrap, having the antistatic bag makes it much easier to sell or give or do something else with your card in the future when you are done with it. I will look what's inside the box in just a minute, but let's take a look at the card first. It's taped up nice. One interesting thing about EVGA is they use these long bags for all their cards, no matter how short. This is a short card. Take a look at how small that card is. That is very small. Now, when you first open one of these cards, they're covered in plastic. You want to make sure to remove the plastic. The plastic traps heat. You can probably get all of it, if you're careful, in one go off of the front. There we go. I will set that aside in my trash pile. And then there's no plastic on the top. I think that's it. There we go. So it is black plastic with a single fan, and then you've got the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti logo here, and on the top again, GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. Now this says super clocked. One thing I didn't talk about before, and I'll talk about here once I finish with the unboxing, what about the non-super clocked? What about uh, other cards, MSI, Gigabyte, 
Zotac, PNY. I'll talk about those in a minute. On the back, you can see that the PCB, the PC board, uh, the printed circuit board is very small. This will fit into almost anything. It is no longer than the actual, and this is not true of all the cards. If you get the Gigabyte WinForce or some of the other cards, they are longer. Some of these cards actually come with two fans. That is complete overkill. If you think a 75 watt card needs two fans, yeah, no it doesn't. The i5 processor in there uses more power than this card does and it just has a little fan on it and it works fine. This fan is actually almost overkill. It does, you don't need two fans. But if you look, the uh, PCI Express slot is the same length as the card. So if your computer has a slot, this will fit. There is of course no SLI connector uh, for scalable link interface. The 1060 doesn't support it either. So if you're thinking of buying two of these, well, don't, that's a bad idea in general. This is where the six pin PCI Express power connector would be on higher end cards. There isn't one. There's nothing to connect. Take it out of the box, take it out of the protective packaging, take the plastic off the card, insert it into the computer, you're done. It really is that easy. On the back of the card, we have three video ports. Let me talk about what these video ports are really quick. This one's tight and doesn't want to come off. There we go. There are three video ports on the back, and yes, you can connect three monitors. If you want to connect maybe two monitors, maybe you want to play League of Legends or something on your left or right monitor, and you want to have a web browser, chat window, or maybe you want to watch Netflix or YouTube in the other window, this card is plenty for that. Having the game on one monitor and being in Windows with a web browser on the other does not add a lot of strain to the computer. It doesn't slow the machine down very much. So you can absolutely run multiple monitors with this card. It won't really game on multiple monitors, but you could hook up three monitors, game on the center one, and have a chat window on the left side and watch a movie on the right or do something else, and it will do that just fine. We have a DisplayPoint, uh, DisplayPort 1.4. This will actually support 4K at 60 Hertz. If you have a nice 4K monitor, but you only care about playing League of Legends, this will actually do that pretty well. I might even do a benchmark of that because that's not a very good uh, demanding game, so I may do that. This will support a 4K monitor, no problem. We have an HDMI 2.0B port. This will also support 4K at 60 Hertz. If your television or your monitor supports HDMI 2.0, not all monitors and TVs do. Some only work through the DisplayPort. However, do you have a 4K TV? Does your 4K TV have a HDMI 2.0 port? If so, perfect media center PC card if you want a nice high-end PC for playing these kind of games on your big television. Then we have a dual link DVI-D display port. Let me be clear about this. This does not support 4K, but it will support up to 1440p resolution without a problem. It will not support the inexpensive VGA to, HD, uh, to DVI adapters, and one does not come in the box. In the whole 10 series from NVIDIA, they've removed that support. In the 900 series, you could do that. In the 9 series, such as the 960 or 950, you could take a VGA monitor and you could take one of the cheap, inexpensive $1 or $2 adapter cables and you could plug it into the DVI port because those had DVI-I ports. This does not. This is DVI-D. Note, there are active adapters that will convert the display port or HDMI port to VGA. They cost about $10. You can buy them on Amazon or Newegg, and those will let you plug a VGA port into the display port or the HDMI port, but you cannot plug a VGA using an adapter into the, into the DVI port. That's a change. Beyond that, there isn't anything else to tell you on the card. It's black on the back, black on the front, black on the top except for the sil silver logo. The SC for Superclocked is right there. It's very lightweight. That, uh, that's not going to strain any computer that you want to install it in. Let me stick it right here for a second in my handy holder. Let's take a look at what else is in the box, shall we? There is a graphics card user guide, and I suspect, yep, this is 71 pages long, and it's written in about 20 languages. So it's 
three or so pages per language. If you've never installed a graphics card, there are pictures in here on how to install. There's various other information. You can read that if you want to. One thing EVGA provides is a sticker for the front of your computer that simply says powered by EVGA. It's a nice sort of metallic surface. It's hard. And if you want to, you can put that on your computer if you care about such things. And then there is a, another pamphlet that this is the short and sweet version. This shows you how to install a graphics card into the slot, how to remove it, what the ports are for, and so on and so forth. Is there anything else in the box? Nope. There is nothing else in the box. So basically, graphics card and two books and a sticker. That's all that comes in there. I know it's not very exciting for an unboxing, but that's what's there. Now, I mentioned before that there are other cards on the market. Links in the description below will take you to both Amazon and Newegg. I will link directly to this one because it's the one I covered, but I will also link to the full list of, 10, of uh, 1050 Ti graphics cards, sorted by price. Why? Because maybe you want an MSI card. Maybe you want a Zotac or a PNY or a Gigabyte card. That's fine. Personal preference. Some of those cards, please note, are longer than this. The Gigabyte Windforce with two fans is maybe 50 plus percent longer. Do you have a smaller case? It might not fit. This is so short, it will fit in virtually everything. In terms of clock speed, this is factory overclocked, about 60 megahertz or so. Are you ever going to notice that? Yeah, not really. You can, however, overclock any of the cards from any of the companies using any of the various uh, software tools. Um, EVGA provides a program called uh, Precision OC. MSI provides a program called uh, MSI Afterburner, which I've used on my channel before. Uh, great programs. You basically go in and set an offset. It's not that hard. You can probably add 100 to 150 megahertz to any of the, 10, of the 1050 cards to get maybe another 5 or 10% performance out of them if you want to. Out of the box, you will not notice any performance difference between any of the 1050 cards because they're all within 50 megahertz of each other. And since these cards by default are in the 1300 megahertz range, 50 megahertz is not enough of a difference to be noticeable. But they can be overclocked. And if you care about such things, maybe you want to buy a card that's a little bit bigger for heat reasons. Please note, some of the 1050 Ti cards do have six pin PCI power connectors. Make sure you look at that before you buy anything else. A few of them do, which completely defeats the point of the card. If you're gonna buy a card with a six pin power connector, buy a 1060, really. It's a better deal in terms of performance for the money. But if you wanna buy something besides EVGA, make sure that it in fact does not have one because companies have the option of putting it on there. And if it's on there, then you have to use it. So, did you like this video? Was it helpful to you? Give the video a like. Did you not? Well, you know what to do. Remember to subscribe to my channel using the big huge button down there. If you subscribe to my channel, you will get updates to future videos such as future game performance videos on this and other cards and future comparison videos between this, the 1050, the RX 460, and so on. Finally, in the video description below, there will be a variety of links. Please check the video description below out. Do you like my channel? Do you want to support me? That's where you need to go. eBay. Amazon, Newegg will all be down there. This card, the other cards I mentioned, my original video review on this computer and why it's such a good deal, and the link to eBay to find one of these. This is 150 or less on eBay. Now it's a couple of years old, but if you're just playing esports titles, it's plenty fast, and it's a lot less expensive than a brand new machine. I've done videos on this before. I'll link to that below. It's a great, great deal. So, leave your questions and comments down below, and as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.